In just a moment, we will be talking to Catalin Rodriguez Ogren, who is the star of Mortal Kombat 2. But before we do, I'd like to once again give a massive shout out to Decky Play by Play and the original Razor for supplying the MK2 footage that is playing in the background throughout this video. Absolutely dope footage, great gameplay, and just absolute pillars of the MK community. So thank you guys again so much. If you want to check them below in the description, you can find the details for Decky Play by Play. Please do like and subscribe his stuff as well. Now, let's teleport kick over to Outworld and take this thing away. Blood FM, Galway's alternative radio station. You're listening to the Goldway Gamer here on Flood FM 101.3. My name is Owen Murphy and I am the Goldway Gamer. And joining me on the line from the US is Catalin Rodriguez Ogren, who is the lady behind the mask of Kitana, Melina, and Jade in the arcade classic Mortal Kombat 2. Catalin, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the Goldway Gamer this afternoon. Oh, yes, it's my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. It, it's. Absolutely, an absolute pleasure to have you here. Now, you weren't involved in the original Mortal Kombat. You came in in the second game. How did you get involved in the in the project? Uh, well, um, essentially, they wanted to add a fairly kind of dynamic female ninja style character. It was a pretty open. The character was really open ended at the time. Um, so, honestly, I, I happened to be at the right place at the right time with the right abilities. So mm -hmm. Danny Piscina actually was uh, saw me training at a health club that we all w worked out at and saw me boxing and then asked me, hey, do you know how to kick or can you just box? And I said, no, actually, I, I can kick. And at that time, I had, had already gotten three black belts. So... I was pretty familiar with traditional martial arts and asked if I knew how to do some other things. And I said, yeah. And then, the, I mean, it was really quite, honestly, that simple. I just happened to be right there when they were trying to cast a female ninja that, you know, the character was originally drawn and it did look like me, even though mm -hmm. it was originally made, you know, you think female ninjas are Asian. Um, but it was really just dark haired, um, dark eyes, uh, you know, from a, a I think a body style, what, you mm -hmm. know, the shape of the body of that character. At the time, I kind of fit it. And then I happened to have the ability between, you know, the acrobats as well as the martial arts ability. Fantastic. And were you familiar with the Mortal Kombat franchise at that stage? I was because I had younger brothers who were massive fans. Cool. <laughs> so uh, they they were just absolute diehards to the game. So that essentially gave me some insight into it. And I'll be honest, I didn't really understand it at the time mm -hmm. because it was so new. But my father um, is a commercial photographer and a DP, uh, a director of photography. So... He, you know, we had, I had grown up in a photo studio and I had grown up, you know, with, um, just in that environment. So mm -hmm. it wasn't completely un, uh, in, I wasn't incapable of understanding what the concept was. So I really kind of had a, a good mixture of skills because I had done some modeling for my, you know, as a younger person, um, so yeah, I was I was pretty comfortable with the whole setting of it. Excellent, excellent. And you played um, Melina, Jade, and Katana. Now Melina and Katana are uh, the kind of two sides to the one coin. One's very elegant, where the other is absolutely savage and ferocious. How did you go about kind of uh, bringing both of those sides into a similar move set? Well, we first filmed Katana. And all the baseline moves. So I had a shot list. And the shot list, of course, correlated to the joystick maneuvers, the high kick option, the low punch option, the jump, all these things. Then you did it the way you wanted to do it. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, so yeah. a lot of those were basic. You know, there's only so many ways you can duck, right? I mean, we all do it a tiny bit differently, but I mean, there's only so many ways you can duck under a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a flying fireball or, or something. And uh, the same thing with the punches and the kicks. They wanted a sidekick option. Well, there's not a lot of variations in a sidekick. But then when it got to kind of moves like the friendship moves and all the different kind of stylized characters, they gave me examples of what the other characters did. And then once they told me that my character was so uh, just raw, um, mm-hmm. that's kind of where you come up with, you know, the birthday cake, and it was literally, you know, John Tobias said, well, what would you do for a friend? And I said, I'd bake him a birthday cake. I mean, like, that's how silly and fun it was. <laughs> and then, you know, what would you do if you were just vicious? And I said, I'd eat him up and spit him out. You know, so there were all these things that we, in a very kind of youthful, playful manner, dialogued about the character and then John knowing what he could create uh, from a digital standpoint uh, was like, okay, yeah, yeah, let's go with that one. Now I want you to pretend that you're doing that. So that's really how it kind of came about. There was, there was no script. That's for sure. As the game went later in versions and they wanted less input from the actual characters. Mm hmm. They had a script and actors were hired and they came in and they did, you know, whatever they were told to do. But, you know, Johnny and Ho Sung and all these guys, you know, John Tobias and those guys were martial fans. They weren't necessarily martial practitioners. It was really fun and really easy to come up with a lot of these things because we were all also competitors. So we had a pretty... Not all of us, but most of us were competitors in martial arts. So we had a pretty um, expansive toolbox, mm-hmm. especially since several of us had trained in more than one style. It sounds like it was very uh, uh, expressive and creative experience then. It was. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, this game is amazing. And John and John and all the guys that created it, they, I mean, their vision was brilliant. I'll never take that away from them. But there were a lot of really amazing stars that aligned. And they had the right friends to help facilitate the execution that these characters could be created. Even though John and those guys were inspired by classic Kung Fu theater, um, Street Fighter. I don't know if they've ever admitted that, but it's kind of hard not (laughs) to be inspired by, you know... um, Five Fingers, from the movie Five Fingers of Death, all the way to Bruce Lee, all the way to what Street Fighter was doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we were all influenced by all these things because we were martial arts geeks and fans in in its purest form. John and, and his crew at Midway, they were just really brilliant developers and really understood that the market could... Uh, would would receive this vision well. Whether he had 100% confidence all the way through, I don't know. You'd have to ask the original developer crew. But, you know, John Tobias and those guys, they grew up with Danny Piscina and Rich DiVizio. They were friends from childhood. So, you know, Danny was um, Danny was kind of the glue, in my mind, that took all the pieces and helped all the movement portion of this game stick together. He understood what John's vision was, and it was really him translating in a lot of way in our martial movement um, vocabulary what mm-hmm. it was that we needed to do because Danny had such an in-depth understanding of what it was to be a lifelong practitioner in martial arts. And at that time, and we were, we were all so young, um, but even at 25 and all in our 20s, between Danny... Um, Rich, Ho Sung, uh, Tony, myself, um, uh, who am I forgetting? Philip. Philip was older than us. Um, he had just graduated medical school, I believe, at that time, or was just starting his residency. 
I uh, believe you just re- released a book about it recently yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all of us at that time, we were in our 20s, and we had started martial arts when we were in elementary school. So we had been doing martial arts for more years of our life than not doing martial arts. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? So Danny, being also very well versed in a variety of styles of martial arts, he knew how to give us the vocabulary to create movements that was part of John's vision. And then as you got into the filming, you kind of got it. And then you just kind of, it started to come out much easier. Uh, the games themselves, uh, Kathleen, have been going for uh, 25 years now. And they're still kicking out games. They're still doing really, really well. The latest one has sold over 8 million copies. And the, uh, the character roster grows bigger and bigger as the games go on. There are more than 80 characters throughout the Mortal Kombat universe. But Melina was by far the most requested character for the latest game. When you were filming, even more so than older characters like Goro and uh, Reptile, when you were uh, filming these characters, would you have expected that kind of uh, that kind of uproar from fans that want for these characters? I mean, no, I, I had no. I, I the thing is, you know, there was such a purity in how the characters were originally created. Um, I hate to overuse the word authentic and organic because that's like such a trivial word right now. But back mm-hmm. then, when we created these characters under the direction of the Midway crew, uh, John and John um, and everyone, it was just done from such a pure of heart perspective. We were all such martial arts fans. And it was like, you know, it, it was like playing you know, cops and robbers outside as kids. It was just so playful and so fun. And while I'm sure the programming team, the crew at Midway, I mean, this was their job, right? They were being paid to do this. They had convinced Mm -hmm. people to allow them to do this in their company. Um, You know, while I understand that the game has changed and adapted to kind of the demands of the video game fan world it's so much more contrived right now in my mind than it was back then Mm -hmm. you know so i realize everything is like trying to outdo everything else but even like the creation of the newer characters i still think the original characters were just so much more authentic um and that's just my perspective but of course i'm much older now and i'm not a video gamer so I have a slightly different viewpoint. It's kind of like, you know, I'm I'm sure you have kids and a lot of the people listening have kids now. Um, When your kids find out that you did something that now is like back in style and they're like, oh, I can't believe mom, you're so OG, you know, and it's like, (laughs) you know, when, when they like to say, you know, like jeans with holes in it right now. You know, like my daughter was showing me her new jeans that had holes in the thighs and I was like, yeah, I have a pair just like them. She's like, no, this is new. And I'm like, no, this is not <laughs> new. So while I see that the characters that have come out have a lot of the original characteristics of the original characters, I think it's not surprising that an original character would be requested. And that's not mm-hmm. to say that you know, Liu Kang's not as good as Melina or Rain isn't as good as another character. I mean, it, that that's not my point. But there was something really first of its kind, I know, with Melina's character. Katana, I still love Katana. I mean, it's she's such a cool character. But Melina was kind of just the first really evil female ninja character, whereas there were other good female ninja characters in media at that time. Would Does that make sense? Would be your favorite of the pair? Uh, Katana is actually my favorite um, because I love the fans. Um, you know, Melina, they didn't know what to do with Melina's weaponry. And when I showed John that I was a, um, my competitor, my, my forms competition weapon was a Psy, and mm-hmm. he said, oh, yeah, just bring them to the shoot. 
we changed to size for that character when I showed them my forms with the size. Does that make sense? And were the they, forms using real size then opposed to as Those were my props? real size. Oh, they were really? not props. Yeah. That's awesome. That's very, very cool. Well, speaking of Melina, then, let's stick with Melina for just another second. Um, and when Richard Video played Baraka, he had false teeth, uh, false nails as teeth across the mask. When you eat a character and spit them out, were you also wearing these nails or was that after effects then? That was an after effect that actually they created in post. I mean, okay. John and these guys, they were great at what they did. So that's what I mean. Like, we talked through what the character would do. So, like, even the idea of Katana baking a cake as a friendship move, that was done because John said, yeah, I think I can do that. I can make a cake. And I pretended to bake a cake. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? And then John's like, well, how would you give someone a cake? And then we went through different ways to hand someone a cake and then we did it in a way that made sure that the character's body position was open enough to the camera that it was um, programmable, right? Because we had to change and alter a lot of the things that we did so that it was capturable with the technology at the time. Excellent, excellent. Well, what about uh, Jade, who's kind of lesser talked about when we speak about Mortal Kombat 2 due to her not being a playable character? Uh, did you... Have any idea of Jade's characteristics or who she was, or was she simply just a palette swap of Kitana? Uh, she was mostly a palette swap, but I do, we did film extra movements. And, you know, John basically, I spent most, most of my time with John of the development team. Mm -hmm. Um, and John basically said that he was playing around with the idea of hiding a character. I'll be honest, I didn't really know what that meant, you know, because mm -hmm. at that time, I think it was very much in his head. And they had explained some other ideas about characters that were um, kind of ingrained in the background and non-playable at the time. So we filmed a ton of extra stuff. And I think it gave him enough to work with. But absolutely, what you ended up with in the end was just a palette change for her character. Mm -hmm. And I think he took some of the same moves and some of our extra moves that we did. Okay, cool, cool. As, as the games went on, then she got kind of her own backstory, her own yeah. weaponry and stuff like that. If you had to chew the weapon for Jade... Uh, are there any weapons in your mind that you would have liked her to have as opposed to Katana's fans? Um, let's see. I think, I mean, I like the staff for Jade. Uh, you know, the problem with the staff on the set is it was just too big and too hard to capture in those days. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would have liked two of the shorter swords, kind of like what you see with... Um, uh, not, is it Daredevil? Uh, like the, the, the uh, little Deadpool? bat swords? Deadpool, yeah. I would have liked to have done something with like the two shorter swords. Now, throughout the years, uh, video games and violence have, well, video games have been a scapegoat for violence for many years. The news outlets have blamed them for school shootings and all sorts of awful atrocities. Mortal Kombat, of course, was often the front runner for this and still is due to the level of violence involved in MK. Do you think there is any connection between video game violence and violence in real life? Um, I mean, I, I think I feel differently on different occasions. I think the totality of the circumstances that led to violence by uh, someone, um, you know, is just far more complicated than saying this influence, this single source mm -hmm. influenced someone for negative actions, um, for violent actions. I just think violence is far more complicated than that. Um, I think there's both um, a wiring and a nurturing and a lack of guidance. Uh, so... Uh, I think as a mother now, I, I, I see how there's such a wide variety of things that 
can place a negative um, impact on really a kid's perception. And at the end of the day, I mean, you know, the game is just so unrealistic. Um, I probably have a bigger problem with um, other games than I do Mortal Kombat mm-hmm. because of the the realism uh, that they use for that virtual world. Uh, whereas Mortal Kombat's just it's so out there. I mean, it just there's nothing realistic about anything within the game. Mm-hmm. I think the lack of realism makes it, um, for me, more digestible. Um, the games that are set in just a very realistic setting and allow people to do normal day-to-day tasks, I think, create confusion. That's my personal opinion. Okay, I think that just about wraps things up. Caitlin, uh, Catalin, my apologies. That's Is there okay. any way people can keep in touch yeah, I mean, obviously, I am on Instagram like everybody else. Um, you know, I have my gym Instagram feed. That's probably where there's the most, uh, I guess, insight into what I'm doing these days. I have had a gym here in Chicago for 20 years now, and mm-hmm. they can definitely follow me there. And that's Pow Gym Chicago, P-O-W Gym. Chicago is the the website and the the handle. Excellent. And just to wrap up before you go, then you are not involved in the series itself anymore, but you do occasionally do uh, conventions and various other things. Do the Mortal Kombat fans still have the same passion that they had back in the 1990s? Oh my gosh, we were at an event. Uh, uh, a group of us. Not this year. I think it was the year before. So I think it was 2019. And it was amazing. The the things people had collected, things I had never seen before. Um, And it was just really awesome. I mean, some of them came with gifts. Uh, They wanted to show things they had made. It was pretty fantastic. Danny organized that. And it was kind of a mini reunion for us. It was an absolute blast. To see everybody. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Catalan, thank you very much for taking the time to come on the Galway Gamer today. Thank you very much for inviting me. Have a great day. You too. You too. All right. Bye. 101.3 Flirt FM. 